Well, hello from the uh, Capuchin Friary in Halston Street, St Mickens in Halston Street. This is the uh, provincial house where I'm based, and uh, of course, this is where the provincial minister and the team um, have their offices. And uh, we connect here, of course, with the Capuchins all over the world, but indeed, not only that, the Irish Capuchins in the custodies of uh, South Korea. South Africa, Southern Africa, and Zambia, and of course uh, the delegation of the friars in the United Kingdom. So uh, this is right across, of course, from the National Shrine of St. Pio in Church Street. So I'm very lucky that I'm only right across, what, 500 metres from, the, um, from, the, from, from, from where uh, uh, it all happens. So we had a wonderful trip to San Giovanni a couple of weeks ago, and we met with our brother Capuchins uh, in the friary there, and they were delighted to see them, catch up with them, and just give them some insights into what we're doing in the um, in the Irish uh, Centre for Padre Pio. And we were also very honoured to meet um, Mr Campanelli from the uh, Padre Pio TV, and of course, it's great to be able to talk about what we're uh, also doing on this, uh, you know, th these little programmes which we're offering to the English-speaking devotees of Padre Pio. And we were able to meet with uh, uh, the mayor of San Giovanni Rotondo. It was lovely to meet the Irish uh, pil pilgrim leaders, uh, to meet the mayor of uh, San Giovanni Rotondo as well. So um, I kept pinching myself, you know, remembering when I was a younger lad, when I was a kid, and my grandmother, my nana, was telling me about Padre Pio. And here I am, you know, a Capuchin, uh, director of the Padre Pio Apostle, and there I am standing in, some, you know, the, the the town hall in, in San Giovanni Rotondo, and I'm kind of going, Nana, Nana, can you see me? Can you see me? Amazing, 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 and uh, it's something again that I, I you know, I'm, I'm I'm only getting used to. Um, I was talking to one of the friars this morning, and I was describing a little bit about how I'm feeling about the the, the ministry of Padre Pio, you know, and uh, like what 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 hopes for the future and. Uh, you know, my prevailing feeling is, you know, it's it's kind of new, it's growing, and we're discovering, we're getting used to this new uh, this new work, um, you know, of promoting Saint Pio on a more full time basis, um, and and at the same time, really conscious of leaning on and standing on the shoulders of giants, first and foremost, standing on the shoulders of parents and grandparents and these people who implanted the faith in us. Faith that can't be bought, by the way, dear friends, in any shops. Faith that can't be ordered online. Faith that can't be, uh, you know, um, kind of manufactured in, you know, supermarkets or manufactured in factories or, or, or on farms. It's a faith that is gifted, is given, is passed on, is handed down. But it doesn't stop there. It's a faith that is passed on to the next generation. It's a complete and wonderful labor of love. So I was certainly thinking about that when we had been thinking about that, the conversation this morning, but also thinking about that, you know, in terms of the work with Padre Pio and what, what my ministry is now as the director of the Padre Pio Apostolate. Like, it's extraordinary to think of, you know, when I was a little boy and my, my, my nana, my mother's mother, who only passed away actually in 1991. She wasn't very old, um, but um, Margaret was her name, Margaret Hart. Margaret Hart, but she was Margaret Ward because she grew up uh, in the Ward family and uh, she married my granddad, Ted Hart, my grandpa, Teddy Hart, and uh, they're my mum's parents, my mother's parents. But Nana had a great devotion to this monk from San Giovanni called Padre Pio, and she used to show me little pictures of him, and she used to always say, he's a very holy saint, he'll, he's a very... And, you know, this was in the early 1970s and mid-1970s when, when the cause for Padre Pio hadn't even begun, but people were calling him saint. And miles and miles and miles away from San Giovanni, my nana in Ireland, in Dublin, was calling him a saint. And so what was she doing? She was passing on that faith to me. And she had an image of the Sacred Heart up on the wall in her house as well. And she used to burn a little lamp, a little lamp, uh, a bit like that lamp there is burning in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in front, front of the tabernacle here. And she bore the little lamp in front of the Sacred Heart and she would teach us about Jesus and his, his loving heart, his Sacred Heart. Again, what was that? Passing on the faith. I mean, obviously she passed it on first to my mother and to my two aunts, my grandpa, her mother and two aunts, bring them to Mass, teaching them to pray, the family rosary. 
And that was that was then in their turn passed on to me. Now I have no children. Uh, you know, I'm not married, obviously, and I have no children. My work is as a Capuchin priest is to pass on the faith to all that I encounter, hopefully by my example. But reflecting on the Padre Pio story and my story within that, again, it is extraordinary. Um, now, not a cakewalk, but an extraordinary kind of story of here I am and I'm, I've been asked to do this. And looking back on my uh, kind of um, history and my kind of experience, you know, and standing there, for example, with the, the mayor of San Giovanni, with the friars in San Giovanni, kneeling in uh, the, you know, Chiesa Antica, kneeling in the Church of Santa Maria della Grazia, kneeling at the tomb uh, in the crypt before the body, the mortal remains of Padre Pio. And I'm kind of saying, here I am, like, a, what a journey, what a, what, a, what a roller coaster it's been. And yet feeling called to to this work but also a little bit scared because it's new and again it's developing standing on the shoulders of my grandparents my nana as i said but also standing on the shoulders of people who built this ministry into what it is today i think of Eileen mcguire of the irish officer of padre pio which became what we now have the irish center for padre pio in the capuchin friary in short street Eileen mcguire and her family jerry maureen morris you know um, I think of those who have passed on who were involved with the Irish Office of Padre Pio. I think of Father Alessio, Father Joseph Pius, Father Gerardo, Father Emilindo, and so on. But not only that, people like Maria Doyle and her sister Claire and her other sister. I think of, um, you know, Bridie Matthews, one of the first of the Padre Pio prayer group leaders in Church Street, in the Capuchin Friary Church Street, with Father Barnabas and Father Senan and Father Angelus sort of standing on the shoulders of giants. Sean Mulroy and Derry and his family, Nicola, who looks after it now, and Anne, of course, Sean and Anne Mulroy, the late Sean Mulroy. You know, and all the different group leaders up and down the country, all the different people who kind of blazed a trail, who kind of connected with San Giovanni Donal, Kat, uh, Kathleen, um, you know, Elaine, um, you know, just, just so many, Patricia, uh, and, and people, you know, the length and breadth of Ireland. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. They're holding us up. Like, you know, the Lord, you know, holds us in the palm of his hand and holds us in his heart. And our blessed lady holds us in her heart and brings us to her son. Padre Pio also brings us to Jesus as our people brought us to Jesus. So I'm looking forward to continuing these little chats every week, please God. And uh, we're going to try and get the, the camera out again and do a few uh, on location, uh, you know, uh, pieces to camera. Uh, so we'll be keeping in touch with you. So please pray for me as we pray for you. And let's also pray through the intercession of St. Pio. Amen.